Welcome to this bite-sized video for the NCFE Digital T Levels, where we'll be discussing the core exam papers and preparing students for success. With this video, focusing on the exam structure and students using this information to plan their exam paper approach. Whether you're delivering the Digital Business Services T-Level or the Digital Support Services T-Level, they will both have exam papers designed to assess the core knowledge. These assessments will be available to sit in the summer and autumn terms on a fixed date and time, and do see our key date schedule for the latest information. Students can retake the exam papers and have up to two years after completing the T-Level to perform any of these resets, and it is their best exam performance that counts to their overall grade. And do ensure any access arrangements or reasonable adjustments have been submitted and ready to be applied for the live assessments, such as scribes or additional time, to name a few. And students can sit the exam as a traditional paper-based assessment, or there is also an online option for all students should they prefer to complete the exam digitally, which may be useful too for those whose handwriting may be difficult to understand. This assessment is split over two exam papers, but it's easier to consider this as one exam paper split into two components, as the performance on each individual paper isn't a factor in their grade, as it's the overall mark achieved across both papers that counts. And paper A is a two hour exam and will assess some of the root core elements, with the same root core elements being assessed in both T-level pathways. But the exam papers for the pathways will be unique and contain different questions, which is useful when it comes to revision and practicing questions, as can use questions from either pathway with your students. And then paper B will assess the remaining root core elements with another two hour exam for digital business services. But as Digital Support Services has got an additional and unique pathway content that is also being assessed in Paper 2, it is an extra half hour longer in order to account for this content. And those core knowledge elements are comprised of the 12 root core elements, those elements that are common to both T-level pathways. And then we have the unique content that's applicable to Digital Support Services only. But regardless of the pathway, the exam papers are designed to assess the following three objectives, which have varying levels of demand, with the lowest demand being A01, assessing the student's ability to recall the relevant knowledge to address the questions, making up 28% of the exam paper. 40% is from A02, and the student's ability to apply their knowledge to the situations, scenarios, and information presented in the question. And this can include unfamiliar contexts or scenarios that were not covered during your delivery, but students would still possess the necessary knowledge in order to apply it to that question. And then we have the highest demand, which is AO3, where students need to analyze and evaluate the information presented, such as making justified decisions or choices, or determining the potential impact or outcome for a given situation, as a couple of examples with the content being arranged into the exam papers in the following ways. With paper A having three sections assessing the six root core elements shown. And while digital business services and digital support services pathways, they will have unique papers and questions, they will both have this same structure and layout. And paper B also follows a similar pattern with three sections assessing the same two root core elements each. But for digital support services, there is an extra section at the beginning of paper B, which will be assessing the content from the three unique core pathway elements. And knowing which elements are assessed and where in the paper they're assessed is the first tip for students. And performing a self-evaluation of the content each section will assess can actually help them to identify where is best to begin. And it's often best for students to start on the exam section they are more confident on and the questions they're more likely to answer correctly as this can have a settling effect and a positive effect as well 
on the student's performance during their exams. And the level of detail captured can be varied by using templates to capture more specific information or evaluating the content at a more granular level. This self-evaluation can be coupled with your own internal data too and any formative assessment activities in order to help advise students on their exam plan. But when it comes to the exam paper sections themselves, they're all designed to assess the different assessment objectives. But the sections will always begin with the lower demand questions and an increase in the demand towards the end of the section, with the other sections following that same low to high demand structure. And this can be used to students' advantage when deciding how to tackle the exam paper. As often, the general approach is just take each question in turn, which would mean going from low demand to high demand questions, then starting again with low demand in the next section and ending with high demand, and so on. But this may not be the best approach, as coming across those more challenging questions earlier in the exam can impact the student's confidence and subsequent performance in the next section. And this may not be as time efficient either, as students may dedicate too much time to the higher demand questions and lose out on the opportunity to address the less challenging questions that come in another section. So instead, the approach could be changed, where students address the question that's at the beginning of each section, rather than each question in turn. This way, the lower demand questions will have been addressed first, leaving all the higher demand ones until the end, which can have a positive impact on the student's confidence and performance in the exam. And then adopting a pick and choose approach to those more challenging questions and dedicating their time to those they feel most confident on and those most likely to answer correctly. And using the self-evaluation mentioned earlier could also help to identify which section they're more likely to perform best on. We hope you found this useful and have a better understanding of the core exams and do see our other bite-sized videos that form part of this exam preparation series. Thank you.